Hello, yeah, welcome wait. to Book Buzz, brought to you by the Peters Township Public Library. We don't I edit. I'm Shannon. <laughs> and I'm Miss Linda. We are, <laughs> here, we are here to go blah, 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 <laughs> and tell you everything that you need to know. What's going on in May at the Peters Township Library's Children and Young Adult Department? See, we spit that out. Yeah. All right. You, uh, well, yeah, you're all like professional, and I'm like. Blah, 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 blah. And, well, you know what? It's because that's rarely that way. <laughs> <laughs> it was my turn to mess up. It today. was your turn to mess up. <laughs> <It's> Definitely. <okay. laughs> all right, we're gonna jump into it. Yeah. Because this is gonna have this trip around the world. This library is news from around the globe. Library news Linda. from around the world, which we, um, I think there what it goes. I, it's spinning. It is. All right, where That'll are we going to land? That'll get me dizzy. I'm going to be I sick. Know. I can't watch. Um, actually, before I talk about my article, I think we need to just kind of just make quick reference to our shirts. Okay. All right. Why we're twinning? Why we're twinning. And we're going to be twinning, twinning a lot all this summer. summer. Yes, yeah. get used to these shirts. <laughs> we, yeah, get used to the shirts, and they will be washed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> Okay, Libraries Rock is this summer. As if you didn't know that Libraries yeah. Rock, we're going to make sure we you just, know that We're this making summer. it official. Yes. Libraries Rock is the summer library theme that we will be following. And um, we have our shirts on it. And having said that, we are starting to gear up to have the kids have a musical summer. Yes. Because uh, what we I was be gonna rocking. say is some yeah we're gonna be rocking because some of the, the reason I hesitate like some of the uh, libraries are taking a different and doing like rocks. Well, I think Miss Sydney's gonna bring in one week of rocks. Okay, and geology. But, and stuff. As, but as soon mostly, as I see all this, mostly it's yeah music. I'm mixing I'm I'm including um uh like science. Yes, me you too. know, rocking yeah, with I'm the science. I'm building. We're building in my in my. Oh, class. that's right. My Design, sound designing and building. And that's right. Oh, we'll talk about that. Okay, so with that, libraries rock. Libraries rock. So with that in mind, I pulled an article that's called "What Music Should My Child Listen To," and I want I want to like present this, but I also want to say, you know, where I got it? PBS.org. Their parents' education. Well, that's a good, reliable source. I would the say the parents' education site. Oh my gosh! As a parent, that uh, it has so much information on so many things. I was going through it. I mean, there was so much even on just music, and I had yeah. to just like pick and you're something. Like, well, I messed up on this one. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> so in. Kudos to them. Yeah, so oh, we, love, we love our friends at PBS and WQED. We do. So thank you for having such a great website. What music should my child listen to? I picked this because my children are, my daughter's a senior in college, and my son has been out of college for three years. Probably what's going to happen with you and Lucas is as the kids are growing up and they listen to your music, and a lot, sometimes they'll be like, oh, my gosh, you know, mm -hmm. like, really, Mom? Really? Or all of a sudden, out of the blue, my daughter would put, like if we're on road trip when she was at lacrosse or something, mm -hmm. put in a CD of stuff that I like. Right. That she likes because... Of you. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm like a Springsteen fan because I grew up on that. Yeah. The same thing. So Lucas mm -hmm. will probably do that too. So right. my kids ended up liking, really liking my music. They listen to their stuff right. for sure most of the time. But don't they don't hesitate when I have my stuff on, you know? So you've, you've uh, trained little Neil Diamond fr fans. <laughs> that might be the only that might be the only exception. Yeah. Of of my taste in music that they may disagree with. <laughs> so I'm whatever. So okay. So music, but what they want to make a point about is. You know, not only what should they listen to, but they're making a point to say, don't just have your child sit there and listen to the music. There was a theory 
that still goes around that they, you know, that's why they have um, the baby Mozarts, mm -hmm. you know, the, the DVDs because they thought if you listen to Mozart or your child listened to classical music, which is true, you, your brain reacts to it in a way that is very positive, yeah. you know, for, for all kinds of development, especially like math and science, mm -hmm. like, you know, more intricate things that, that you need the brain power for. Um, anyway, they're saying you have to go beyond that, that they don't want the kids just sitting there listening to music do something with them with it. So like <clears throat> Tiny Tunes, yeah. our music class. Bodies that, in Motion. Bodies in Motion, where we do things. And we'll be doing that all summer. Mm -hmm. But they're saying clap, sing along, hum, you know, just do whatever with the music yeah. to get them engaged in it, which is like real easy. And then, of course, they do make note to say, even if you really stink, I mean, well, not their words, but if you really stink at singing. Kids don't know. They don't know. They don't care up until a certain age, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Just do it anyway. Right. Start with a familiar. We do that when you're little. Mm -hmm. You know, you start singing the Eensy Weensy Spider and Old MacDonald and, you know, all of that. It says add classical. It tells you, you know, you just do it at their age. You know, you're not, they do bring up a bot, like a Pink Floyd album, you know, if, <laughs> you know, your child, they, you might not want them listening to Pink Floyd at, you know, eight months or whatever, but <laughs> um, they said, you know, of course be age appropriate. Um, parental guidance suggested. Don't just give them a carte blanche. A lot of parents just give the kids their devices and say, here, yeah, go ahead and listen right. to music. Pick and choose with them. Share music time with them. And my favorite, coming to the finale, um, they may find something that they like that is particular, they may find something they like that is particularly awful, like mm -hmm. not good music, but, um, he, they, they're saying they, for me, it I would depend on the language because there's a oh, yeah. lot of, yeah. you know, and there are, but there are sites now that, aren't, aren't there things that pull the language out of You can buy songs? edited music for edited songs. Yeah. Yeah. The kids swap version is always hilarious to see how they turn those words. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> but he, but here, the guy that wrote this suggested that um, just remember that if you're letting your kids listen to music, this is just this would crack me up if if I did this, if I said this to the kids. Said okay, that you know, let the kids listen to their stuff, and then what you say is, it's daddy and mommy music time. Is that weird? <laughs> yeah. You know, I'd be like, yeah. I, it's da you know, what are the, right. I'm sorry, honey, it's daddy and mommy music time. Instead of just like, okay, that's enough. Put on the Beatles, you know, or something, <laughs> you know, I mean, like, it's, you know, it's a little bit, a little bit too much for me. Um, so I'll end it with whether it's your choice or the child's choice, remember above all to model your love for music, which I know you and mm -hmm. I both have. Sing, hum, dance, or air guitar to your favorite songs, even if your child doesn't like them. It doesn't matter if you can't sing, though they say it nicely, or dance well, because you are showing them the joy of music, and that's what we're going to do this summer. Awesome. Yes, we're going to yep. be rocking. All righty. be fun. I'm excited. Me too. That'll be our nice little intro for when we get to that part of the, the show. Of doing that but right, speaking of oh, right into the food yep you've so got a teen audience in, um august it's not the first week in august we mm -hmm. celebrate national watermelon day which we'll talk about more in the summer because that's I, I found out one day that it was national watermelon day and i said i'm all about this so we've <laughs> even ate we've even had watermelon and stuff on the show which you almost poisoned me with a couple oh, that was that was funny but okay. um I was uh -huh. looking for, you know, I, I like we love a good theme at our library. Lynn and I are really kind of known for really getting into a theme. It doesn't matter what it is. Right. Right. And so I was looking for like, you know, special days that like there's popcorn yeah. day and there's different things. Oh, yeah. So I stumbled upon the fact that, and I'll give you this as your clue. Okay. Unfortunately, I don't have the real thing because I was it. too hard to transport. Plus, we would probably get in our teeth and stuff to eat it on TV. But this is your Oh, I would love clue. to eat it on TV. 
Oh, so <laughs> this is as good as I'm going to yeah, get. As as is it National get. Pizza Day? It's National Pizza Party Day. Oh, National Pizza Party Day. So yes, not only and I'm all pizza. about a good pizza party. I mean, I'm all about a big, good party. Yeah. I always <laughs> tell my kids in all my classes, I'm like, if there's a party to be had in here, we're having it. Yep. Um, so National you. Pizza Party Day is on Friday, May 18th. So if you come to the teen room between 3.30 and 4.30 while supplies last, mm -hmm. we will have uh, pizza and we'll have, we'll have a pizza and party. And it won't look like this. And it this. will be real. It won't look like this. <laughs> Only I get stuff like this. <laughs> That's what day of the week is that? That's a Friday afternoon, so it's perfect. <gasps> is that a day that I work? You pro I was 5.18. Yeah. Probably. Probably. Oh, no, because I work that Saturday. I might come in. At, well, I was thinking selfish like hello where's mine <laughs> that's all yeah so yeah. we're excited so pizza party day on may 18th so uh, there's a bunch of teens in our room right now make sure you head over to the library on that day and get your free pizza i mean it's free all you can eat pizza while supplies last damn it's gonna be fun <laughs> a I'm lot of free stuff it. yep we do that okay one more shot at crossing the bridge between home preschool and kindergarten it's a long title but what it's boiling down to is it's a one hour session free at the library with the kindergarten teachers, um, a guest speaker from the uh, Pittsburgh, uh, the Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh, to tell you things that will help your child prepare and get ready for kindergarten. Yeah, I think it's awesome. It's yeah. I've never done anything like this, so it's exciting. Yeah, because you know what? There's more involved. I mean, you're going to be yeah. you're going to be great by the time Lucas is ready to go into kindergarten because you know of all of this and the resources and how to do it and what needs to mm -hmm. be done because of because of the nature of our business, which right. is really cool. Um, but a lot of people don't, and right. like you had mentioned in the other our the other show for the first half of the month, it's more than just academic. You right. know, it's social. You know, can they separation anxieties? Right. Yep. Emotional. Can they button their coat? Can you know there is what do they call that executive functioning? Right. You know, being able to do you know the things that um, they need to do. Yeah. So, so. we're really excited. We're, we're teaming up with our local kindergarten yep. teachers for that. So make sure you come if you're a parent of a child who's going into kindergarten in the fall. Um, make sure you stop by. One hour. Yep, Wednesday, for free. May 23rd at 7 o'clock. And we'll have some fun giveaways and things for you, too. So it'll be worth, okay. it, worth it. Maybe we'll give away a basket. Oh, God. Yeah, we have, <laughs> we love giving away we stuff. We love a good basket. We love giving away good baskets. Here, let's put together a basket. Uh -huh, we're yeah, all we love it. doing it. So, and I giveaways. just love prizes. As I like to win prizes, so I feel like everybody in the world probably likes to win prizes, too, if I like to win prizes so much. Okay. Okay, because we're all like you, mm -hmm. right? I, I think people like to win things too. Yeah, and it's I, a good I like giving. Yeah, I like giving it away because it just makes everybody happy. Yes, I, I agree. Moving on, Talking here we about go. Some cool stuff. Yay. Summer reading. It's so coming so fast. June second. Oh, so the kickoff, which is always like we talk about how we love a good party. This is probably one of our favorite parties of the year. Um, it's going to be a Saturday afternoon from eleven to one. You can come in. You can get signed up for for summer reading. Um, this year we are doing things a little bit different, which we're going to talk about some more, but every kid that comes to sign up will get a cool goodie bag with some coupons and little mm -hmm. prizes and giveaways and um, information about stuff to do for this summer and yeah. all kinds of cool stuff. And you can come. Oh, I kept, yeah. So starting that day, you can get registered from $5 one-time fee per child, and we'll have and that's some just for the kindergarten, the kindergarten and Yeah, up. K through 6. The younger ones, they're... It's, we run it differently for the right. younger ones, right? Which so they don't pay. Yeah, yeah. freebies for the little ones. But we'll be raffling. But five dollars. Yeah, five dollars one time for the whole summer of all the stuff that we do in May. Oh my gosh! Well, so we're going to go right into it. Let's talk. So that was June second, eleven to one. Yep. Which is oh my god! Again, like you just said so at the fast. beginning, I can't believe we're talking summer yeah. and I think all the kids here are chomping at the bit going yay well I feel like our winter's been extra long too because of our weather so I feel like it's impossible that it could really be this close to June but it is yeah the weather hasn't been so much so okay we talked about the highlights it's rock you know libraries rock we're gonna have a fun very fun display in the lobby yep rocking it and we're and you briefly kind of mentioned 
we're doing it differently this year. Yes. So we need to talk about that. And actually, I think it is going to be much better. Uh -huh. I'm Not so as far excited. as our programming is going to be wonderful, I've but it's about believe, how we're doing the prizes. Yes, I usually believe change is good in this situ situation. I believe that change is like going to be awesome. I just yeah. feel like it's really it's Me time too. for it. And I'm excited to see what all is going to be involved for these kids. Yeah. It's awesome. So we're not quite going to talk about. We can. We can talk about should it. Should we? About so well, let's give them some background. I know that you've. They've all been through a summer reading program. Let's hope the kids accrue points throughout the whole summer. Mm -hmm. They use their points at the end of the summer to earn prizes. Right. They can buy prizes. So we set up a store. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, usually the theme try to keep in the theme with some things, set up this big store and, you know, constantly replenishing it mm -hmm. and they go shopping. Right. And we keep track of all that. We're not doing that this year. Nope. That's, I, you know what, I was going to say good news and bad news that that's the bad news when we're not doing it, but I actually think that's a good news thing too. I think too. what we're going to have offering now is even better. Yes. We're revamping. And so instead of your child coming and, you know, and you arguing that why do you want five pencils, you know, buy a book or, you yeah. know, I mean, we've seen so many, you know, the kids just want to spend their money. They want to get fun toys things. And trinkets and things. We're going to do, so w let's explain it. We're going to put together baskets. Yes. A lot. A lot of, of baskets. baskets. So a lot like of kids Chinese are going to be. a auction in Peters Township. A lot of kids are still going to win. Yes and have access to winning, but we are not going to just be giving away junk. Yeah. I'm going to put it that yeah. way, right? Toys and gadgets Yeah, we're not going to start, you know, saving up on the gadgets and gadgets and, you know, mm -hmm. and we are going to, I mean, nice baskets yeah. with, like, things in them, gift cards and maybe de and some devices or, you know, books, books yeah. like all kinds. And we are going to have a, um, a lot per age group. level age level yes. yeah per class per, per class. class yeah so yeah. that just even that class what now are we going to let them put it in any or just in their class just in their class i think just to make sure that like yeah, because you know, a, a little kid doesn't win something. Like, because the big kids aren't going to necessarily want what's for the little kids. Little kids might want what's for the big kids, but right. it won't go back that right. way. So to make it fair. Yeah, no, like, that's, that's we'll have, a, but we'll have a large selection. Like last year for the teens, I had sixteen amazing teen baskets. So we're going to probably took up have the 10 whole middle so. of your floor. Yeah. It did. We'll probably have ten or so per age. age. So that's going to be a lot to choose from. And. If your child doesn't win, another flip side of this, since we're not doing the store, we are going to, when, when you register, you're going to get prizes just right for away. signing up. Yeah. So we so have get like right free away. gift certificates to local um, little kids meals for restaurants. Everybody mm -hmm. will get when they sign up. Um, when you sign up, you'll probably get a free book or something. Yeah. Um, something. Little, on. little trinkets and things that they want to get for their prizes with. They'll get that just for coming in and signing up. Just, yeah. Just for being in the program, you will. Everybody will get something. So there's so, so everyone's no a winner. Everybody's yes, I like that. Everybody's a winner. Mm -hmm. Everybody's going to get something. Um, so we should see happy faces. Yep. And then how they um, earn the tickets is a little bit different too. A little bit different too. And we can get more into that at another time. You know the details right. of it, but just throwing out the fact that the process is going to be revamped. Yeah. We're adding not just reading, but other components to uh, read, uh, learning. Mm -hmm. So yep. sciences and STEM, a lot of STEM, STEM. things and STEAM. Yep. yep. So it'll be a lot of fun. So please well, come and visit us on oh. June 2nd, get signed up, get your goodies and start reading and start learning and get ready to rock this summer with us. I was going to say, you know what? I wanted to remember to say, you know how, and you just did it perfectly, like how we're going to do both. We're going to do music and other activities. And I want to incorporate, because music is a science. Yes. You know, I mean. In, in an art. In an art. So I'm going to incorporate it. And do you remember what I called my, what I'm calling my group? 
No, but I can look it up unless you remember. I do remember. Okay, good. I'm glad you remember. <laughs> now, aren't I calling it this instead the sounds of science? Yes. Instead of the sounds uh, sound of silence, like mm -hmm. by Garfunkel, mm -hmm. Art Garfunkel and Simon and Garfunkel. Simon and Garfunkel. Thank you. I'm calling it the sound of science. Yes, it'll be fun. Yeah. I'm excited to see what you come up with. So we'll do a little that. bit of a little bit of both. Then it'll be a lot of music, but we'll, like the crafty things will be more maybe more sciencey. Mm -hmm. So It'll be a lot of fun. Yep. So come and sign up and get start. Like that's gonna just be it's so much fun we have going. I know. On. Yep. I know. And real quick, we I want to talk about QED. So in May it was a huge QED night with Daniel Tiger, and now oh, uh -huh. coming up we are gonna have in June we're gonna bring back Pinkalicious. Not physically, Pinkalicious will not be coming. She will not be there. But we do have yeah. a cardboard cutout of Pinkalicious that you can get your picture taken with. It'll be on display at our library. You can come see a big one. We're, like, we have a small one. We're going right. to have a life-size Pinkalicious coming. Um, and we have, QED just gave us a bunch, a whole kit full of Pinkalicious stuff to, nice. that we can do. Um, and different, also different science and math and STEM activities. So, Pinkalicious night will be, normally QED falls on the second Thursday of the month, but we had a scheduling conflict in June, so we're going to have Pinkalicious actually on June 7th. Okay. Um, so that will be still the same time, 6.30. So, don't want to miss um, it. Don't want to miss it. So make sure you get signed up and come see us for Pink. Pits. Technically, the show is Pinkalicious and Peterific because her brother is a big component of the show as well. In the book series, it was more so about her. Yeah. But in, the, in the TV series, it's... I guess to make it geared for more both girls and boys. And boy. Her brother is he's a big adventurer and he's involved in the in the show oh, as well. Oh, that's a lot. good because until you just mentioned that, I kind of forgot she had a brother. I don't know she does in the books. I'm not really sure. Oh, okay. I haven't read all the books. Huh, I have to think about it. Yeah, cuz you just see her and all right. this stuff. So I was like, well, it could be my old brain cuz uh, that's what I always say I'm like I'm old. Okay. So, we have lots of time to talk about books. Good. Let's do that. Okay. So, let's talk about music books. Then. Okay. This, well, this one's both history and music, and I talked about it on the show before, but it, the series is expanding. And coming up in June, we do have our Camel Tune event at the Community Day. So I'm listening to that. This is my favorite book that I've read so far in 2018, Alex and Eliza. It is by Melissa De La Cruz, which is a um, best-selling YA author. She has a couple of different um, YA series out and some standalone novels. This is um, a historical fiction, mm -hmm. but it, she did do a lot of research, so a lot of it is based upon fact, um, even a little bit more so than some of the, the facts that are presented in the Hamilton musical. Mm. There's definitely some differences, and I found that some of her stuff is more true. Um, about their courtship, about their dating, and how they meet. So and, good. Oh, it's so, so much good. fun. And I love at the beginning of each chapter, they give you the location and the time period mm -hmm. of when it's taking place. Because since it is historical fiction, it's really hard to get your mind into what, Picturing. It's, what it's all yeah. going on. So um, so this was the first book in the series that came out last year. We did it with our YA book club. It was really fun, Alex and Eliza. And now, just in April, the brand new sequel came out. So Love and War and Alex and Eliza's story. So at the very end of Alex and Eliza, they do get married because obviously it does happen mm -hmm. in history. This is about the very beginning of their marriage and how the Revolutionary War is tying into so that. Yeah, that'll be good. So, did we get that in CD? We do, yep. I'll be okay. listening to it as well. Are you? <laughs> well, yeah. I don't have it yet. It's uh, not cataloged yet. But, oh, okay. Um, we, yeah, so this is taking place immediately uh, after, you know, and just their... They're new. They're newlyweds, and mm -hmm. they're all they're newlyweds um, during a war. So it's a little bit all that's involving their relationship, oh, cool. and you can see like their hearts a little bit broken in this picture. But so Al book two of the Alex. Right. I hope she keeps writing more. I mean, that's she, right. I, I'm really enjoying it. It's so fun. Yeah, I'm listening to it right now in my car. I like to have books going mm -hmm. in my car, book on my nightstand. Yeah, the book, audio but, was well know, done. The audio is really well done. Mm -hmm. Wow, I'm really enjoying it. So I'm glad we'll have the CD, too, of the other, because if you don't have time to, like, read, you can listen. Right. Because we're in our car a lot, like, zooming Everywhere. around. Yep. Okay. I love this. I know. This this would actually it would have been a good Mother's Day yes. kind of selection as well, the Love Me Tender. And I want to tell you what timing on this. Elvis Presley's Love Me Tender, they're making more books, and I was explaining this to the, my my kids and my programs this um, week that they're taking um, songs mm -hmm. from famous people and putting picture books right. to it, right? So that's exactly what Love Me Tender is. 
it, it all it does, it'll follow um, the, the lyrics and then put all the words to it. So you could, if you were really ambitious when you were doing a program, you could sing it, right? Yeah. While you were turning the pages. Guess what I did? You wrapped it. No. Oh, <laughs> I haven't wrapped in a while, right? <laughs> Remember I tried that one time on here? Well, we were shooting, we were doing this at the library, and I think I had to wrap something. I don't know what oh. it was. It was horrible. Anyway. That's funny. I don't remember, but that's Yeah, funny. well, that's because sometimes you blank out, like, you know how you traumatic block experiences. out tra <laughs> traumatic experiences. So this week, my theme was about the spring rain, you know, yeah. and I had a new book about, a, you know, umbrella and all this stuff. I did the book that's like this, Singing in the Rain. Oh, cute. Yeah. And you open it up, it's all the rain pictures and all the lyrics from Singing in the Rain. Well, as geeky as I am with my music, happen to have, I, use, I used it one year. I just copied on a CD just the song Singing in the Rain mm -hmm. so that I would have just that song for the, you know, the theme. And I found it, dug it out. And so I had the kids this week as one of my books, Jean... Um, Kelly, who is long gone, sang it, and as he sang the lyrics, you were able to turn the page. And I turned the page. Fun. And we went through the book like that. And then, and actually, too, I would at least point, you know, yeah. where the sentences were and what page that we were on, so that they could follow along. So, our mu uh, one. I think of I want this book. I'm looking at it because. You were talking about your kids liking your music because you, you know, like mm -hmm. Elvis is really important and my, my mom loved, like loved Elvis and like our thing was watching his movies, which are oh. all, they're all exactly the same. Oh yeah. And they are. <laughs> <laughs> I, do you, was your mom really into it or was it no, both her, of you? No, her. She was a huge Elvis fan. Always like to this day, she more likely could give Elvis's birthday and death day over most of her grandchildren's birthdays. Like Funny. She knows, like, it's just in her head. One of my college roommates was like that. Yeah, she loves it. So the him. day that Elvis died, we yeah. used to, I used to watch them with her, too. Yeah. You know, as a matter of fact, she was at the wedding. Oh, fine. Um, she, I mean, was mortified the day that Elvis yeah. died, yeah. you know, and was Bad. just really into it. So that, yeah, that would be perfect for her. I know we only have a, probably a minute and a half, so okay. go ahead, pick another one. So, oh, music. So because I have book, a funny This book one. seems so cute. It's called Wildflower, and it is about a girl who is, her family is in a country band, a bluegrass band, and she's been, since she was a little girl, it's almost like a Taylor Swift kind of story, she was traveling around singing, and then one day her dad um, can't sing for some reason and so she fills in for him singing lead and a scout picks her up and wants to record her so now all of a sudden wow. she has um, a record deal and you know of course the crush she's always had finally notices her but I just like this is just like the type of story I just love <laughs> yeah uh, that, <laughs> that sounds, sounds good like, it, there was a the, song called Wild, wildflower I wonder if there's maybe a reference yeah, they, I forget. And it was then back in, I love the tagline here the best songs come from broken hearts because that's like I just totally just yeah. Oh, just yeah. Me. So, because um, I was a singer song. This was me in high school. Mm. Or I wanted to be anyways. Yeah, cool. So I used to sing and write music and stuff and play guitar. Back That's in the, funny. Back in my youth. Back in your youth. So, but I can't wait to read The wild, Wildflower. And good one for someone reading with our music theme. Oh, crap. I just lost a page. Okay. We only have 30 seconds. So, can I, like, I know we'll do, like, our toast Go thing. But I couldn't resist. It has nothing to do with music. It has nothing to do with music. <laughs> This is, book is so funny. It's called Bug Blonsky and his very long list of don'ts. So real quick, he, it's a day in school. He gets in all kinds of trouble, and by the end of the day, he goes home. The principal had already called the parents and told him all the trouble he's in, and he is not allowed to go to a friend's house and do stuff. As a matter of fact, like one of the questions he said, one of the things, one of his don'ts, number 13, don't ask Principal Sternsley if she was pretty when she was young. <laughs> because if you do, she won't think you're being charming or conversational. You know? Okay. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so this one's funny too. Ms. Munster is a, uh, apparently like the science teacher, and um, 
Well, how do you pronounce that? U R A N U S. Uranus. For, yeah, Uranus for the the planet. Yes. And it she it says don't ask Ms. Munster if if uh, is Uranus the biggest. <laughs> It says, because though. if you do, it will come out sounding all wrong, and Miss Munster will scrunch her eyebrows and say, Benjamin, that is entirely inappropriate. But the illustration is. The is illustration. <laughs> yeah, that's funny, too. It's like, it's really funny. Yeah. And at the end, you like see these. him writing his long list of everything that he did wrong at school. I like it. That looks like a fun one. I feel like our boys especially would really enjoy that. Oh yeah, for sure. It is definitely a boy book. So, <laughs> and we love that kind of humor. humor. Well, yeah, because it's do. our maturity We're level. Weird. <laughs> All right. We'll next see you time. Next time.